Hi there, good well, morning, good morning everyone. everyone. How are you today? How are you, Mrs. Yeah, P? Yeah, good, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> we are Roger and Jan, and you know what? We just want to say thank you for allowing us into your homes once yeah. again by the wonders of modern technology. Um, you know what? I, it, when you think about it, you wonder what Christians way back then would have made for all this live oh, streaming gosh, and, yeah. and Zoom stuff. Oh, goodness, yeah. I mean, be lost for words wouldn't they yeah they really would i mean if you think about it some of them would have walked miles and miles just to meet with other christians mm. and sometimes in pretty atrocious weather mm. and and from all kinds of outlying communities mm. in fact you know what would be a good right now is for those of you who are watching and listening to us today is just to write one word in the comment box as to where you're listening from which country which town which village um, and that way we'll get a quick overview of our geographical reach. Yeah, that's a good idea, Mrs. B. Listen, come on, folks, get get well, putting it in the comments box right now. Well done, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mr. P. Um, and we can start the ball rolling by posting our location today of Nutsford in Cheshire. Yeah, good one, good one. So what have you been up to this week? Any pearls of wisdom, any snippets of information you can share with the viewers? Um, well... You do know, there, there is something that I saw on Facebook that just caught my oh, eye. Oh my gosh, here we go, Facebook, Facebook, <laughs> no, no, the no. font of all knowledge. <laughs> no, 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 listen, you know you've been banging on about a funny smell coming from the fridge. Yeah, that's because there is a funny well, smell. Well, apparently, November the 15th, according to the nationaldaycalendar.com, is National Clean Out Your Refrigerator oh, Day. <laughs> and apparently the reason it's on the calendar mid-November is to remind people to get their fridges cleaned and ready for the arrival of Christmas. And of course, all that extra food we end up squeezing into our fridge as part of that celebration. Well, that's kind of interesting, although I don't think we'll be squeezing quite as much food into no, the fridges, <laughs> fridges this year with all the restrictions that are going on. Um, but I, I do think that many of the recognised dates on the calendar, um, whether that's a, a national clean out your refrigerator day or, or I don't know, New Year's Eve or uh, an anniversary or more importantly, dates like the birth of Christ. Uh, well, they do cause us to pause and reflect mm. on the significance of that day. And in fact, yeah. I was um, listening to someone a while back talking about Christians having three key dates uh, in their lives. The first one being the date when they were born, the second one being the date when they were spiritually reborn, and the third being the date when they came to an understanding of why they were born. In other words, what mm -hmm. are their God purposes or God purpose uh, in this life? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so you were born on... <laughs> The 13th of May 1960. Oh, well remembered. Are you impressed with that, viewers? Are you impressed? Uh, you were spiritually reborn when? The 1st of February 1976. Okay, so the big question is, when did you come to an understanding mm. of why you were born? What is your purpose or purposes as a, as a champion of Jesus? Mm. Well, that's a bit more tricky, isn't mm. it? I mean, I do have a strong conviction of a, a few key reasons why I think I'm here. And they're probably true for most Christians. Um, but those that are more specific to me, well, that's maybe not quite as clear. Well, there you go, viewers. That's something to get your teeth into yeah. today. Why were you born? What is your purpose under God in life? Boy, that's a very deep introduction to our live stream yeah, well, this morning, Mr. P. Well, we don't want any complacency <laughs> getting into the live stream, okay? So think about that this morning. But anyway, what's happening today, Jay? Okay, in a moment, I'll be handing over to one of our favourite bands who'll be leading us in worship, and they are the wonderful Bright Line. I'm so looking forward to that. And then we've got Paul Moores, who is the regional manager of the Leprosy Mission. And he's going to be sharing with us about his missionary heart concerning this awful disease. Did you know that it still claims uh, 200,000 new cases every year? Mm. That's a lot, isn't yeah. it? And that's going to be a great throwback to the word that Chris Bowater brought to us last Sunday when he challenged us to have a mission mindset. So, a great morning in store. But, without further ado, here's Brightline. One, two, three. I'm lost in this moment This feeling I know I can't deny Like strangers in motion I can see true love in your eyes hey, There's something about 
to Helen and together with Mark and Sam we host the Toast Life Group. Our life group meets on a Monday night every two weeks and at the moment we're meeting online using Zoom. Toast is made up, we've got a group of really great people ranging in age from 20s, 30s to 40s, 50s and 60s, both single and married couples. We're a very friendly group and we enjoy getting to know each other as the weeks go by. We were recently discussing how we all came to be at Life Church Wilmsley. Although we all had different stories, there was a common thread that, was, that ran through all of us. We all like being part of a small, close church community and we have a real sense of belonging. And we all like being part of a local church family. And together we want to reach out to those around us. And this is something we want to mirror in our Toast Life group. We want to be able to encourage and support each other. We want to be able to find comfort when we need it. And we want to grow and learn together as part of God's family. And we want to meet up and have fun together. That's 
So, if you aren't part of a life group yet, and if you'd like to join us, we'd love to hear from you. You can get in touch by emailing lcwtoast at gmail.com, or you can find us on the Life Church Wilmslow website or Facebook page. Come on, join the toast revolution. And who doesn't like toast, right? Good morning everyone. My name is Paul Moores. I have the great privilege of working for the Leprosy Mission. I also am very privileged to have known Paul Bryars for over 30 years and I'm glad to count him amongst my friends. Now he's told me that you lot are very friendly too so here goes. Leprosy 
in 2020. I'm sure some of you are thinking, surely it died out centuries ago. After all, Jesus had lots of interactions with those affected by leprosy, didn't he? Now, we're a global organisation and we're leading the fight against this awful disease which unfortunately is still around in 2020 in many parts of our world. We follow Jesus' lead. We seek to bring about great change. We look to break the chains that leprosy brings with it. We look to empower people to attain healing and dignity and a life worth living. A life in all its fullness, as it says in John 10. Now, no one should suffer from the disease of leprosy because it's preventable and very treatable. We have and have had for a number of years what we call our multi-drug therapy, which we look to get into to, to as many people's hands as possible, as soon as possible. We also have wonderful, wonderful surgeons around the world who perform reconstructive surgery to help get lives back on track. Now the Global Fellowship of Leprosy Mission actually work across 28 countries, but I work for the Leprosy Mission of England and Wales, and we focus in on 10 countries across Africa and Asia, Bangladesh, Ethiopia, India, Mozambique, Myanmar, Nepal, Niger, Nigeria, Sri Lanka, and Sudan. All of these bring incredible challenges and unfortunately have very high rates of leprosy and they lack the services and opportunities needed by the people affected. So as well as supporting people living with leprosy, we're also looking to serve future generations. We're working towards the end the end of leprosy, the end of the transmission of the disease, so that in the future people will be born into a world that is free, finally, from this terrible disease. Now we partner with governments, with churches, with other organisations, and most importantly, we work with people affected by leprosy to achieve our vision and our vision is summed up in uh, a very short statement our vision statement is this leprosy defeated lives transformed we're in the transformation business I could show you film after film uh, footage after footage of people who come to our leprosy mission hospitals in dire situations their bodies are broken their spirits are crushed their lives are almost unbearable and they come out after treatment after surgery with hope in lots of cases with new limbs with new energy with new strength and that's the transformation work that we are part of one of the unique battles that people with leprosy have to fight is the fight that you will have seen and heard about in Bible times. This whole stigma that comes with it, you will have heard that people shout unclean to those affected by leprosy and keep them at arm's length. Don't touch them. And unfortunately that has come through the centuries and still we are involved with lots of people who've been thrown out of their own communities even thrown out of their own families and that happens on a regular basis so we're involved in education as well we look to get involved with communities with with groups of people to tell them this is what leprosy really is and break some of the myths 
break some of the discrimination, break some of the fears and superstitions that still cause people to throw their loved ones out side of their communities because they are affected by leprosy. Now we look to help each individual. We look to obviously to point them to medical and surgical solutions for their ailment, for their, uh, for their um, leprosy. But also we are very much involved in letting people know how much God loves them, how much God wants to see their lives transformed. And so as a mission, as a Christian mission, in the countries I've mentioned, in the hospitals across those countries, in the, uh, the, the centres across those, uh, those countries, we are involved in bringing the love of God and healing uh, of both physical, emotional and spiritual kind. And I'd just like us now to watch a film together in a few minutes time of one such person this story i believe really gets to the heart of who we are as a mission it's the story of a lady called nagamal a lady who is from the indian city of chennai and you will see in this film the stigma she's had to overcome as well as the incredible physical battles that she's had to undertake and also hopefully the picture will be painted of how the leprosy mission comes alongside not just groups and communities of those affected by leprosy but every standalone individual who has to battle now once you've seen our mission in action in this film you will hopefully have caught a glimpse of how we operate, of who we are, of the things that we look to do. And if you'd like to know more, would you please visit our website? It's leprosymission.org.uk. And there you can look further at all that we do, look into all of the, the various aspects of our work. And if you'd like to support us, there's also a very easy way there for you to be able to donate and, and help us financially because without our supporters, without the churches around our nation, we wouldn't be able to do anything. And I would love you to have a look at this Nagamal film. Look at our website and then just ask God just in your heart, is that a mission I would I can stand with? Well both in prayer and financially. When I was a girl, I dreamt of becoming a nurse so that I could help others. But life took me on a different course. I was 18 years old when I first noticed patches on my face. But then things got worse. My hands and feet became deformed. The doctors told me it was leprosy. I had never heard of leprosy before. Life was difficult, but I had the support of a loving husband while I was going through treatment. He was my rock in times of struggle. At this time, I frequently cooked for my elderly mother. Sometimes I would burn myself and not even realize because I was losing sensation in my hands. Then my ulcers got worse. My toes and fingers needed to be amputated due to infection. I was no longer able to do anything for myself. As the leprosy got worse, the love and support of my husband meant everything to me. But unfortunately, his family didn't see it the same way. 
அவளை விட்டுட்டு வந்துருப்பா அவளுக்கு சேதம் செய்துக்கிட்டே இருக்கிற தம்பி அவங்களுக்கே செஞ்சுட்டு இருந்தீங்கன்னா வழிக்கு என்ன பண்ணுவேன் உனக்குன்னு என்ன வச்சிருக்க இன்னும் உன் வழிக்கு என்ன வேணுமோ அதை செய்ய சும்மா அவங்களுக்கே செஞ்சுட்டு இருந்தீங்கன்னா செஞ்ச வரைக்கும் போதும் உனக்கு என்ன செய்யணுமோ அதை செய் He told me he was going away to look for work. When I begged him to stay, he assured me that he would come back home. But I knew we had no future together. The pain of leprosy weakened my body, but the pain of abandonment crushed my spirit. Then one day, there was so much rain. more than i had ever seen in my life many parts of the city and the suburbs have been flooded from the incessant rains that have hit chennai in the past 24 hours amidst the worst ever flood situation in tamil nadu i waited for someone to come and rescue me from the goat shed where i was staying as i waited my ulcers became infected from the dirty flood waters for four days and four nights no one came to help me i felt so alone a few days after the flood struck an educated man from another village approached me as i was seeking refuge from the water i couldn't remember the last time someone was happy to see me He wasn't afraid of my leprosy. The man told me he was from the leprosy mission. He looked at my ulcers and bandaged my wounds. It was as if Jesus himself had come to visit me. After the flood they took me to the leprosy mission hospital Every day they cared for me feeding me and helping me wash They performed surgery on my arm After rehabilitation I could eat cook and even clean for myself Now I am fully independent I never imagined that while I was in hospital they would reconstruct my home which was severely damaged by the floods. Now I have a place that is perfect for my needs. The leprosy mission equipped me with the skills I needed so that I could advocate to the government for my human rights. நாப்பது வருஷமா கரண்ட் இல்லை எல்லா ரூட்லேயும் கரண்ட் இருக்கு சார் எனக்கு மட்டும் கரண்ட் இல்லை எனக்கு கரண்ட் கொடுங்க நான் நாற்பது வருஷமா வீட்டில் கிடத்துறேன் எனக்கு கரண்ட் வேணும் நீங்கள் என்ன பண்ணி தெரியும் எனக்கு கரண்ட் வேணும் எனக்கு அவ்வளோ தான் ஒன்று ஒரு வருஷத்தில் கரண்ட் கொடுக்கணும் நானும் ஏறி ஏறி கரண்ட் அந்த ஏன் இறங்கிட்டு உங்க படை ஏறி என்னால் முடியாது இதுக்கு மேலே ஃபைனலி ஃபார் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டைம் இன் மை லைஃப் ஐ நாவ் ஹாவ் ஆக்சஸ் டு எலக்ட்ரிசிட்டி ஜஸ்ட் லைக் மை நேபர்ஸ் ஐ ஃபீல் லைக் ஐ ஆம் அ பார்ட் ஆஃப் சொசைட்டி நவ் that i am just like everyone else there used to be nights when i could not bear the thought of living for another day but now my life is transforming i have become a person of hope I hope you found the story of Nagamal both challenging and moving but also inspirational in the God is still in the business of transforming lives today and uh talking about the nation of India where Nagamal lives we have more workers more hospitals more projects 
more interaction with those affected by leprosy in that nation than anywhere else. And I just want to share for a few minutes to finish this morning a story of when I was able to visit there. About 18 months ago, I had the opportunity to travel to Calcutta and to West Bengal with a colleague. And this is just a couple of things that happened during that trip that have stayed with me and will hopefully be a blessing to you this morning. I've called my short talk Ponder Anew. And now we have a lovely daughter. Well, we have two lovely daughters. But one of my daughters, Amy, got married last year. And uh, Amy has this saying. She says to me, Dad, you are too hearty. Now what she means by that is I cry a lot. I get very emotional quite easily. Now... On my visit to West Bengal, I was able to visit the Circular Road Baptist Church in Calcutta. One of the founders of the church there was the father of missions himself, William Carey. And so it was quite an emotional morning to start off with. We arrived at this church, a beautiful church, a lovely congregation, mixture of all uh, people from all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of races, all sorts of uh, nationalities, all sorts of um, ju just just age groups and all, everything. It was wonderful. And we began to sing a hymn. And it was a hymn that probably most of us know. It's called Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. And we started to sing verse three. And these lines hit me from this hymn. It said this. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do, who with his love doth befriend thee. And at this point, I started to cry in the middle of this congregation, most of whom I knew not at all. One colleague who was alongside me who was deeply embarrassed <laughs> at this point. But God just hit me with this realisation of where I was historically but also the fact that he seeks to befriend me I was overwhelmed by it and that invite to ponder anew has stuck with me pondering means this to think carefully about to consider to contemplate to meditate upon can I ask you to close your eyes, literally just for 10 seconds, and think about your very best friend. It might be your partner, a family member, or simply a friend that you've had a long time. Okay. Now for me, my lovely wife, Lou, is definitely my best friend. But when I think of friendship, I often am taken back a few years. About five or six years ago, I had a heart scare. I had a, a minor heart attack just walking around a supermarket one night and was taken into hospital for tests. Now, I go to watch Manchester City uh, football um, I've been a season ticket holder since I was a kid with my dad and so it's sort of in my blood really uh, and there are three or four guys a mixture of us who go to the games together and when they heard that I'd had this heart incident I they're sort of from all sorts of backgrounds they're not all Christian guys they're not all um, sort of emotional guys like I've proven myself to be but they were all at the first visiting at that hospital, sat around my bed, asking how I'm doing, wanting to know. And that, for me, was just incredible friendship. Just that they threw whatever else they had on that night, they were there around the foot of my bed. Now, friendship is maybe not the way we consider our relationship with God. We might think of him as Father and Saviour and Lord and Almighty, but he wants to be our friend. Ponder anew. 
the fact that he wants to befriend us. He wants to share our laughter, our tears, our weaknesses, our successes. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. He did it for us, his friends. Now, to finish this story, I just want to say that the building next door to the Waterloo Road Baptist Church that we were in that morning is the tomb of Mother Teresa. And we visited um, and we saw this quote, which I'm sure many of you will already know. It was up on the wall of one of the rooms there at the, uh, the museum type setting around her tomb. And it says this, this is Mother Teresa. Being unwanted, unloved and uncared for and forgotten by everybody, I think is a much greater hunger, a much greater poverty than the person who has nothing to eat. Now, I've talked to you this morning about our fight with leprosy and the fight against physical poverty and all that comes with that, the poor diet, poor sanitation, is definitely a greater a great poverty but there is a greater poverty it's that of knowing that we loved and befriended and longed for and I just want to finish this morning by asking you this week would you ponder it again think about it deeply again the fact that the almighty with his love wants to befriend you thank you once again for allowing me to be with you this morning. The Lord bless you. Bye. Well, thank you, Paul, for sharing that word with us about a, a disease which still goes under the radar for most of us uh, in the UK. And, and it's, it's quite a shocking fact for us to grasp that um, every two minutes, yeah. someone in the world is diagnosed with leprosy. Mm. And I guess during this time of pandemic isolation, we do need to remember the lifelong isolation that people affected by leprosy can face even though we know it's a, a curable disease. Yeah, it's such a fantastic work that the Leprosy Mission are doing. And just as we close, if something has been stirred in your spirit, remember you can contact us very easily. Simply send us a message in the comment section of this live stream or you can message us on our website. That's lifechurchwilmslow.org. Also, do think seriously about joining one of our three midweek life groups, which are now fully up and running. And again, all the details can be found on the church website. Boom, that's <laughs> us done. You all have a great week and we'll see you again next Sunday. Yeah, bye everyone. Bye.